My name is Doug with Infotainment.com. Today we're in the 2009 through 2012 Dodge Ram pickup truck. Today what I'm going to show you guys is how easy it is to install a backup camera system for your truck. This happens to be in the tailgate handle here. Installation process is very easy. You're just going to swap and remove their factory tailgate handle, install our kit. Um, the loom goes down and it plugs into this longer loom right here. I'm going to feed this into the cab behind the radio. Uh, this is going to actually plug into your touchscreen radio. Uh, you'll have, so you'll have RCA interface here. And then your power and ground, we make it very easy by using this kit we invented, which is an easy DC kit. So this will be an intermediary between your cigarette lighter and it gives you power and ground. So just a quick crimp and you'll get power and ground. The very last step is to run the OBD Genie programmer in the OBD2 port to activate the backup camera feature on the vehicle's BCM. So that way when you put the vehicle in reverse, the image appears on your screen. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is remove these eight screws here that are on the tailgate itself. Uh, these are Torx T30 screws, so we'll go ahead and remove those now. Now we can remove this and set it aside. All right, now we're going to use an 8 millimeter wrench here and take these two nuts off. All right, once you remove the two nuts, you could just lift up on the assembly and kind of set it back, and then the handle just comes right out. Now what we're going to do is remove the two screws, the 8 millimeter screws, that hold the lock into place and stick it in the exact same location on the camera handle. Now we're going to go ahead and install the handle. So we'll stick the wiring up through the hole where the handle is going. And then you can install our handle. Now you kind of have to rig it around a little bit to get the handle in. Now that we have it in place, we can go ahead and reinstall our two 8mm nuts. Now we're going to take our wiring and stick it through the hole. There's a pretty big size hole right through here, and we're going to fish it to the other side. Then we can route it down in this hole here where we can easily connect the loom underneath here where the spare tire is. Alright, before we put the back part of the uh, tailgate on, you're going to want to test just to make sure that the new handle works well, which it is. So now we can put that plate on and reinstall the eight screws. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the loom to inside the cab. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this, um, but basically what I've done in the past is I'll connect it here, and then I run it along the driver's side frame rail, and just use the included zip ties to kind of use, um, to kind of adhere it up to the next some of the wiring or the frame rail itself, uh, just to get it up right there by the driver's door. So we'll do that now. Alright, we've got the loom run up to right underneath the driver's door here. 
So I kind of like to come in right through here. The emergency brake line comes in right through here. So if you take off this little panel here, you'll notice right here there's a grommet right where my finger is. And if you can kind of push that grommet out of the way just enough, you can squeeze the camera wiring in there. All right, now that we're into the cab itself, you can actually take the wiring out of the uh, shielding here. Um, so go ahead and pull all your wiring out. And then what you can do is you can just snip the, uh, the shielding, obviously with the wire out of it, and that way you could tuck it back in and then the grommet goes right back into place make it in a nice smooth finish. You don't necessarily need the shielding inside the vehicle, it's more or less for the outside. Now we can just run these wires up behind the radio. I'm gonna use a little bit of electrical tape both on the underside and on the top side here, just to make sure it's nice and sealed and that no wires are gonna get pinched. The other thing you can do too is actually use a razor blade and just kinda cut this little grommet back a little bit just to give you a little extra room but this is the easiest way to get into the cab obviously you can always go in through the firewall but I found that this is pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it now what we can do is just kinda start making our way over to the uh, where the radio is when I obviously want to keep the wiring away from the gas pedal and the brake pedal but we're gonna make our way over to the radio now in order to interface the wiring not only with the cigarette lighter here or behind it but we're also going to obviously interface the video with the radio we need to take this apart now this particular vehicle has a center console so uh, we're going to take this apart there's two screws up here and then a screw behind here. If your vehicle does not have a center console, not to worry, you're only gonna have three screws. There's gonna be two above the radio and then one uh, right behind this little panel here. So let's go ahead and pop this little trim off. Use a dash pry tool or a regular screwdriver. Just kind of get up under it. Set it aside. To pull this liner out here that'll give you access to two Phillips head screws then this whole thing just pops out of place like that all right now that that's removed now we're going to remove this little liner up here to give us access to the two uh, Torx screws. I believe these are the T20s. All right, there's gonna be one more screw here. It's gonna be behind this little panel. Now, those of you who don't have the, um, the little inverter here, There'll still be a, a screw back here regardless, right there, so we'll access that torque screw as well. All right, now this whole center stack here, bezel just pops right out of place. So we could disconnect the, the connectors that are behind it. All right, now that the bezel is removed, now we can feed our wiring up. Remember, we have an RCA video and then power and ground for the camera. So we'll just kind of sneak it in back through here. And then the excess will coil up and zip tie.
All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the radio so we can plug in the RCA interface. Now, those of you who don't have a touchscreen radio, come check us out at infotainment.com. We do sell the factory touchscreen radios, just so you know. Um, but those of you who have an aftermarket radio or whatever, obviously, uh, most aftermarket radios or even mirrors for that instance, uh, rear view mirrors, will have RCA video input. But since this is a factory deck, we're going to plug it into this port right here and then put the RCA interface down here. Now we can screw the radio back in. All right, now the RCA video from the camera can just plug right into here. You can use a little bit of electrical tape if you desire to put this in so it's a nice secure connection. And then that can just sit back. Now all you have left is power and ground. So this little cigarette lighter is switched. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap into it by disconnecting it. We're going to plug it into our easy DC. And then the other end of the easy DC will plug back in to the back of the cigarette lighter. Now, all we have to do is just crimp power and ground into this little kit. I know it looks a little intimidating with these kind of fancy crimpers here, but you could really use anything you want from needle nose pliers to just regular pliers. We just need to get a good, nice, tight and secure uh, connection here. All right, guys, I just use a little bit of electrical tape like I mentioned earlier. It's always a good idea just to make sure your connections are nice and solid. Uh, so I did that both on the RCA and the power and ground. So at this point, we can kind of just tuck things back. You can use a little bit more zip ties, zip ties if you prefer. Uh, but now that everything's kind of ready to go, we'll just reinstall the dash um, and then the center console in this particular case. Uh, one thing I did want to mention real quick, on the back of the bezel, there's this little red tab on one of the connectors. You have to pull it up first because usually it's locked down into place. So pull it up, push it in, and then the connector comes out. And then this little lever here um, kind of goes back and forth as well. So whenever it's in its lock position, you push the little tab in here slide the gray lever and that comes out and then just do it in reverse whenever you reinstall the bezel All right, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to install the OBD Genie uh, programmer. Now, this will program the vehicle for backup camera. So you'll notice right now if we put it in reverse, nothing happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in the OBD2 port under the steering column until we get the green LED. So we'll do that now. All right, now that we have the green light, we can go ahead and remove it. 
All right, guys, um, you'll also notice your radio will reset. So once you turn it back on, you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Now we have a backup camera. Just an awesome image and quality. Uh, it's very reasonably priced, too. It just makes backing up, uh, connecting to a boat, a trailer, whatever the case may be, so much easier. So come check us out, guys, infotainment.com. Like I mentioned, we do factory radio upgrades, cameras, uh, satellite radio, hands-free Bluetooth, you name it. So come check us out. Thanks for watching.